Hello Overclockers, welcome to another video featuring me, 8pack, the star of this channel, head of R&D here at Overclockers UK. In this particular video, what we're going to be doing is taking a 9975WX Threadripper processor, overclocking and tuning that particular CPU, and then testing it with different speeds of memory, all the way from 4 to 800 megahertz, all the way up to 8000 megahertz, and obviously, once we've seen if the results are affected on our benchmark tests, we can then ascertain whether it's worth overclocking your RAM. All that being said, if you want to find out how to overclock memory on this platform, and indeed, is it worth it, continue and watch till the end of the video. All that babble over and done with, let's dive into it. Okay, that being said, the aim of this video is to show whether speeds of memory affects the performance on this new Threadripper Pro platform on the WRX90 motherboard. So for this video, obviously, if you're trying to prove that memory speed is indeed improving performance, then you need to keep everything else but the memory within the system consistent. And to do so, I chose for the hardware the Asus WRX90 motherboard, which is next to me here on the desk. In that board, I had the 9975WX AMD Threadripper Pro CPU. Being a Pro CPU, it can run in Octo Channel, and of course, we already know from a previous video that Octo Channel gives the best memory bandwidth. Alongside that, I used my standard WD SN850X drive, which was installed with the latest version of Windows and all the latest chipset drivers. Installed in the motherboard, I had uh, the NVIDIA 5090 by Pellet, again, a GPU that I'm very familiar with that I reviewed previously on this channel. Installed in Octo channel then, and really the focus of this review, was the T-Create Memory by Team Group. And in this kit, I had 128 gig of capacity installed over the eight sticks, with each stick having uh, an XMP of 6800 megahertz. But of course, I wanted to test several different frequencies to see if frequency and overclocking the memory would affect my overall benchmark scores. In terms of tuning the CPU, that was kept consistent throughout the benchmarking and we're doing a PBO2 style of tuning. This style of tuning was chosen because it has the highest single core frequency on the 32 core, which is normally around 5.6 or even 5.7 gigahertz. But on the 32 core, also when multi-core testing is used, it still keeps the frequency reasonably high, around five gigahertz. So on the 32 core part, you have the best of both worlds. I chose the 32 core part also because on things like Cinebench and the single core tests, you get more variation, if you like, against the higher core count CPUs, especially things like uh, Cinebench R23 and R24. On a 96 core, I finished in literally 10 seconds. But on a 32 core part, it takes a little bit longer and the score varies much more, again, to ascertain what effect the memory is having over on the overall score. All that being said, to be clear, the only things I changed was, first, I went into the BIOS, set up PBO2 on the CPU and left the memory at 4800 megahertz stock for my control. Then I loaded the XM Pre profile, which is 6800 megahertz for my next set of benchmark results. Then I kept the XMP timings, but up the clock speed to 7200 megahertz for my third set of results. And finally, for my fourth set of benchmarks, although we don't have full results on that, I overclocked the memory to a massive 8,000 megahertz. Now we're not gonna show benchmark results on the 8,000 megahertz because I also had to up the voltage from the standard 1.45 volts to 1.55 volts to make sure that 8,000 megahertz was able to pass mem test and therefore I wouldn't recommend running that voltage all the time. So I just wanted to show that the memory was still scaling at 8,000 megahertz. The platform is capable of 8,000 megahertz. The actual CPU IMC can run 8,000 megahertz, no problem. But I couldn't recommend that for 24 seven use. Maybe for short benchmarking, you can run 8,000 megahertz with 1.55 or so volts. But again, anything over 1.45, I wouldn't recommend for 24 seven. But I can say that this particular kit did 7,200 megahertz at stock volts and stock timings without any issue. So all that being said, 
What are the results through my benchmarking suite? So 4800 megahertz stock versus 6800 megahertz XMP. We saw a 1.5% improvement in our 23 single core. We saw a 1.7% improvement in our 23 multi-core. We saw 3.6% improvement in our 24 multi-core. In V-Ray, we saw a 2% improvement. In Corona 1.3, we saw a 5.3% improvement. In Corona 10, we saw a 2.5% improvement. And in our Blender rendering test, we actually saw a negative result of around 1%. On average, 6800 megahertz versus 4800 megahertz, we actually saw about a 2.5% improvement over our full benchmarking suite. When comparing uh, the 4800 megahertz result versus the 7200 megahertz OC result, we now saw a 1.5% improvement in single core, R23. In R23 multi-core, we saw a 1.5% improvement also. In R24 multi-core, we saw a 5% improvement. In V-Ray, we saw a 6.2% improvement. In Corona 1.3, we saw a 6.7% improvement. In Corona 10, we saw a 3.8% improvement. And in Blender rendering, uh, 7200 MHz versus 4800 megahertz was now about flat, with almost no improvement at all. On average, of uh, 4800 versus 7200 megahertz, we now saw an almost 4% improvement again across our entire benchmarking suite. Obviously, like I said before, I did actually try 8000 megahertz and the improvements that you saw for on the uh, graphs that you've already seen was scaling what, we, what you would say linearly. So the improvement from 6800 to 7200 to 8000 was about the same going all the way up. And when we extrapolate that out to 8,000 megahertz, we're talking an over 5% improvement across our full benchmarking suite. Now, uh, the, I guess some may be asking why is this, and I would say it's fairly obvious why this is really. Uh, basically, where they're giving the CPU more memory bandwidth and more memory speed to play with, and therefore, uh, you know, the benchmarking is going to be superior, especially in benchmarks that do require memory bandwidth. And I did actually try this, these particular benchmarks uh, with some finite ana element analysis and some CFD style software. And I saw uh, really solid gains in, in those software packages too. Uh, around 5% on 8,000 megahertz, 4% on 7,200 megahertz, and 3% uh, or so on 6,800 megahertz versus our 4,800 4, megahertz stock. I suppose to answer the question whether the increase in memory speed or indeed the overclocking of the memory is worth it to you as an individual, you have to look at what tasks you're doing. So if you're doing projects that run for days and days, such as finite element analysis or you're rendering in cinema 3D or you're doing you know, Octane renders or V-Ray that takes a long, long time, then 5% uh, is a lot of time that you could save. So I would suggest in projects that are, you know, in tasks that you're running a CPU for, where you're running for days and days or even hours and hours, then a 5% improvement is certainly worth getting faster RAM. If you're doing a short task, then I really, uh, it's not going to be worth getting any quicker RAM because you're not going to save that much time. And I guess it's down to the individual to ascertain this, you know. I mean, I would question why you would be buying a 32-core uh, Pro CPU if you're not doing tasks that are massively multi-core and are going to run for hours, if not days, anyway. So that, that's also, I guess, down to your hardware choice in the first place. But on this platform, most people or most of our customers are doing CFD, FEA, or some kind of heavy rendering, and in which case, for those tasks, that we have proved that the memory uplift or the memory speed uplift is definitely worth it for you. So in conclusion, what are my final thoughts? Well, as a tinkerer and as an overclocker, I obviously enjoyed overclocking the memory, uh, testing the memory and seeing how memory speed affected performance on this platform. To answer the question, is it worth it? As I've already covered, it's literally up to the specific use case. But if you're an end user who is using this particular CPU and platform for any long tasks, such as rendering, FEA, CFD, or these very time consuming tasks, any time saved in my book is certainly worth it when you consider that the price difference between this kind of speed of memory to your normal speed of memory is relatively low. 
I mean, I won't say this is certainly uh, worth it for the gamer, but for the business customer, I would say it is worth it. And if you are choosing this platform, it probably is worth getting faster memory, you know, to get the best out of already and uh, quite a substantial outlay. Obviously, because of my findings on this video that memory speed is actually improving performance, we'll be incorporating higher speeds of memory into 8-pack bundles, into all my systems, and indeed into our B2B offerings in the future so that our customers get the absolute pinnacle of performance, as you'd expect from the 8-pack and the render brands. And finally, as always, don't like the video, don't subscribe to our channels, and certainly don't check out any of our socials. But do, of course, as always, check out another one of my amazing videos on our channel starring the superb and superlative 8-pack, such as my Threadripper Pro CPU review. And of course, also check out the right bicep.